On question three, we're given this table and asked a few probability problems. The first one is, what's the probability of randomly selecting a person who never takes their medication that's prescribed and is a woman? So looking in this table, if we just go to the never column and also to woman, we can see the probability that we need right there, 0 0.0636, and we're good. The second probability is the probability of never taking your prescribed medication or being a woman. On the formula sheet provided is the formula for or probabilities. So the probability of never or woman equals the probability of never plus probability of woman minus probability of never and woman, which is the probability we found right there in the first part. So let's find the probability of never. If we just go right down to the bottom of the never column, it gave us the total is 0.1200. Uh, probability of woman, go right here to the total, is plus 0 0.5300. And now we have to subtract never and woman, which is 0 0.0636. When you do that arithmetic, you end up with 0.5864. In the third part of part A, we're finding the probability of never taking your medication given you're a woman. So again, the formula sheet gives us our formula here. We just take the probability of never and woman and divide that by probability of woman. So we have that from part A, 0 0.0636. And probability of woman again is this 0.53. And when you do that division, you end up with 0.12. In order for two events to be independent, the probability of one event happening given the other has occurred has to be the same of just the probability of that event happening. In other words, knowing that someone's a woman shouldn't tell you anything about whether they've never taken their medication or not if woman and never are independent. So actually in part A, we calculated this probability to be 0.12. And that actually equals the probability of never, which is 0.12. Now, just to be sure, we have to calculate it the other way around as well. So the probability of woman given never has to equal the probability of woman. Now, we already know the probability of woman. That's 0.53. So the probability of woman given never, um, using that formula sheet again, we can see that that's the probability of woman and never, or this probability here, divided by probability of never. And it turns out when you divide those, you do in fact get 0.53. So it said, are they independent? So we'll say yes, never response and being a woman are independent for the people surveyed. To answer part C, we first need to notice it follows a binomial setting. And the acronym BINS is sometimes helpful for checking these conditions. So first, it's binary. The response can either be always or not always. Independent, since we're sampling from a large population and sampling only five people without replacement, it's safe to assume they're less than 10% of the population. So the 10% conditions met and we can consider these trials independent. There has to be a fixed number of trials and it says we're looking at five people. And then finally, the probability of success has to be the same for each trial, and it is, it's 0.54. So this does follow the binomial setting. So we can use our calculator to figure out the probability. We have to use our calculator twice. We're gonna use the binomial PDF function, and we're gonna calculate the probability that exactly four people say always, and we're gonna calculate the probability that exactly five people say always. And when we add those two together, we'll have our response. To do this on the calculator, press second, VARS, and go all the way down to binome PDF. It says how many trials? Five. What's the probability of success? 0.54. And what's our X value? We're gonna do four to start. So when I press enter and then enter again, I get that probability. So there is a probability of 0.1955 five approximately, that exactly four people answer always in our trial of five. Now, a quick little shortcut, if you press second and then the enter key, you can go over to here and just change this last number to a five. 
This will give us the probability that all five say always. Now, if we just add these two probabilities together, there's our answer. Now, it specifically says to support your answer, so I think checking the conditions was probably necessary. If you liked my explanation of this problem, you might want to check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's available on Amazon, and I'll put a link to it in the description.